Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today we've got some episode 9 images and news and very cool stuff for episode 9 that came out of this Vanity Fair cover. We've got some very cool images and also a little bit of teasers for like storyboard kind of stuff, uh, some new details from the movie. Very cool stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Also, I do want to remind everybody there is still about a week left in my giveaway for the Star Wars Black Series Celebration exclusive Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. I will ship those worldwide uh, to one lucky subscriber. All you have to do to enter to win these is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now, Vanity Fair has done uh, big, you know, exposés on Star Wars before. I remember a big deal was them doing this for uh, Last Jedi, and they've done it here, and it's very artistically done, beautiful stuff. So uh, that's exciting. So we've got Ray on the cover here. We got another cover with Kylo Ren, and then we're gonna get a lot of photos. And I will put a link to this whole article down in the description below, so you can read the article because there's a lot of uh, a lot of captions and things that where they talk about a lot of these photographs. Um, and, and so we got a couple of photos uh, from, from this world, and, and this, this, uh, this desert world is actually called Pasana. And uh, that's one thing we learned from this article, uh, where, where they're filming uh, you know, all of these scenes. There's this big chase, uh, there's uh, you know, C-3PO's involved, BB-8 is there, we've got Chewbacca and Rey that are on this speeder here. And, uh, and, and this reminds me a lot of, of the, uh, so, like, a little bit of the scenes that we saw in the trailer, so this is probably the same world Pasana. So, pretty interesting. Um, now, I do recall that we're seeing Finn and Poe on, on a speeder in a chase, So, but this one looks like we've just got Rey and BB-8 and Chewie on this particular speeder, so maybe it's a bigger chase scene that's involving a lot of people, kind of like almost Road Warrior, uh, Mad Max-esque. You know, maybe something like that, you know, or, or maybe there's just two completely separate chase scenes. But my money is on that. It's all one big chase scene and uh, that they wouldn't do two separate desert chase scenes in the same movie. Because that just, that doesn't feel right. But who knows? You know, I, you know I'm trying to keep expectations really low uh, because that always just serves to be a good thing. So I, I'm not going to really try to expect anything in particular. So, uh, so we've got that. We've got we've got some of these native Jordanians uh, who are playing this race called the Aki Aki. I don't really know much about them, but they kind of have almost like Quarren faces, right? Like they look like they could be distant cousins from the Quarren, uh, maybe you know, or just maybe in you know, maybe nothing like that at all. So they're they're pretty cool, very colorful, very uh, very pretty looking. Uh, all right, so we got that. This is a great great image right here. We've got Kylo Ren fighting Rey in either snow or ash. Ever since Game of Thrones, I don't know if it's snow or ash anymore. Uh, but uh, but it looks weird because Rey looks like she's looking in a different direction, and and so like, you know, they've been doing this misdirection stuff. So I don't even know if this is them fighting each other, if they're going to be fighting each other, or if they're just or if they're training, or if they're fighting a third person who's in the middle that they just didn't include for this shot. You know, we don't know. Like, and, and according to some of the rumors, there, you know, it may, maybe they're fighting Palpatine. Who knows? You know, um, but now it's an interesting thing that they talk about with this scene too is um, their their bond, or I guess what Adam Driver calls it a maybe bond. So this is interesting because I I was pretty sure it was said pretty clearly at the end of Episode Eight that their connection was broken. Like when when the when the door closed after she Ray saved everybody, the door closed the Millennium Falcon. Their, their connection was closed, like they were cut off. She was done. But apparently they still have a little bit of a bond. Uh, and it's going to, apparently it will run deeper than previously revealed, which is very interesting. Um, and again, that kind of leans towards the whole theory that we're going to see a redeemed Ben Solo. I don't think they're going to want to give too much away about a redeemed Ben Solo. I think it's going to happen. My prediction is it will happen fairly early, at least halfway through or before in the movie. So you'll get a little bit of bad boy Kylo Ren, but I think you'll also get some good good guy Kylo Ren, good good guy Ben Solo. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can no more. We got John Boyega, and uh, and oh, this new character who is played by Naomi Aki is named Janna, and uh, yeah, and they're riding these these horses, and that they're called Orbax. Now, never seen a horse like this before. Never seen these creatures, but watch. They're going to suddenly be on, like, every planet for every new thing that comes out. Every comic book, every book is going to somehow have Orbax, like, everywhere. It's just like they're going to be referenced all the time now. I bet you. They do look cool, though. 
They absolutely. I like, I like how they have like the armor plated. Uh, you know, they have a good. Uh, you know, probably only so much you can really do with a horse's face. They probably just uh, animatron or like CGI'd out the faces a little bit though. Um, they might have put like some kind of armor on the horse's face, like a green screen kind of armor, so that they could just easily, more easily, you know, swap out the faces. But but pretty cool. I like the whole bow and arrow on horseback thing. It's very like Japanese, right? Like and and honestly. Um, or is it China? Or is it Japan or China? But like a lot of like Star Wars inspiration is like a cross between like old westerns and then like these ancient Japanese movies and you know the samurai aspect of it. And like you know, mounted uh, archers was definitely a thing. So like I, I kind of dig the inspiration for for this. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool riding horses too. You know, I don't have we haven't seen horses in Star Wars yet. So I'm I'm like I'm digging it. This oh oh this one. Gotta love it, right? Got to love it. Poe and Lando and Chewie and BB-8 uh, in the Falcon. I don't know what, what, what Chewie would think about Poe taking his, his seat. We got Lando back in the Falcon taking... Uh, apparently he takes the helm, so I don't know if he's reclaiming the Falcon. I'm really curious how this is going to go down, but it seems to imply that he's in command, that Lando's in command of the Falcon here. Love the outfit. Um... You know, and we knew that this was the outfit. If you were, if you watched the panel at Star Wars Celebration, you saw Lando's uh, outfit. But I love this one, and I'm curious what this little device um, over here in the in between them is. I don't recall that being there in previous. Like, uh, so are they putting like a flux capacitor in this thing, and they're going to go back in time and save Han? That's that's what's going to happen. They're going to time travel. They're going to collect the Infinity Stones. They're going to snap and bring Han back. That's. Not really a real prediction, but I mean, why not? You know, no, problem. That would that would that's that, that would be out of character, but that'd be something. Um, oh, all right. So we got Hux. We have uh, we got this new uh, this new First Order, and his name is uh, General Pride, and uh, they're on Kylo Ren's destroyer here on the uh, bridge. Looks like a bridge, but it also looks like it's like a conference room. So. You know, it could be maybe a double... You know, it's got the windows that you see in the bridge. But uh, let's just assume there's more than one set of windows on the Star Destroyer. Yeah, so very cool. He looks look at like one of the older First Order guys. So he might be like a leftover Imperial, too. Wouldn't surprise me if General Pride here, or Allegiant General Pride. Now, I don't know if that's his rank. They call him Allegiant General Pride. So either Allegiant General is kind of like a Grand Admiral type of title, or... He has a Star Destroyer named the Allegiant, and he just, that happens to be, you know. But if he's a general, generals usually aren't in command of Star Destroyers. Generals usually have a different function. So, this makes me think, if there's a general who's a main character, that makes me think we're going to see a big ground battle. Kind of like Veers, right? Like, maybe he's, uh, you know, a, a distant cousin of Veers or something like that. But if he's also older as well, so he is probably an ex-Imperial, and one of the things we've seen is a lot of the older Imperial people, or the people that have had the experience, the combat veterans, they, they know how. Kind of like uh, Kennedy, Captain Kennedy, for in the Dreadnought, he was like, we should have sent the fighters out five, ten bloody minutes ago. You know, like He knows the, you know, the, the right way to do conventional warfare, whereas a lot of the newer First Order people don't. Like General Hux will be probably cocky and foolish, maybe he will have learned. We also learned that this whole thing takes place only a year after uh, Episode Eight, so not as much of a time jump as we were uh, thinking. So Hux may not have grown all that much. Oh, this is Carrie Russell's character. Now, what a cool costume, right? I know the helmet's going to come off. I'm wondering why they gave her a helmet, too. Is there something about her face that's going to be interesting? Uh, these are Thebes' quarters on the snow-dusted world of Kijimi. Kijimi. Interesting. So, the Kijimi is another world, snow-dusted, so it's a cold, snowy world. I'm all about the snowy worlds. Um, Hoth, Starkiller Base, I'm loving those, especially for games like Legion, because I made all my Imperials have a snowy base. Uh, but she she's going to be playing a masked scoundrel named Zori Bliss. Zori Bliss. Now, names aren't quite so random in Star Wars, so if her last name is Bliss, that means she's going to be a good scoundrel. She may be in the scum and villainy faction, kind of, but she's going to be like, like more like a Han Solo type character, I'm almost certain. But I'm curious if her face is, isn't is significant, um, and that's why they have her with a, a mask on. Um, 
usually when there's a mask, once the mask comes off, there's some kind of aha moment. We saw that with Boosh, with Leia, taking off her helmet, you know, in, in Return of the Jedi. Like, oh, the surprise, it was Leia all along. We saw that with, um, gosh, well, you know, we, we, we saw that with Vader taking his helmet off. Oh, he's an old man and he's, you know, he doesn't look so scary, you know. But we also saw that in Solo, a Star Wars story, Infus Nest. You thought Infus Nest was a dude the whole time. Like, I didn't, but I, I mean, I think a lot of people were like, it was that was meant to be the aha moment. They're like, oh, it's she's just a, a, a female. Not, not only is she a female, but she's young. She's just a girl. She's like a kid trying to lead this whole revolt, you know. So, so they, like, I think that's, I think the fact that she's wearing a helmet means that there's going to be some kind of reveal when the helmet comes off. Whether she has some kind of relationship to some other character, like uh, an old friend, maybe an old lover, maybe a sibling or a cousin or a child of someone, I don't know. And again, I, it, it's dangerous to kind of speculate too much. So I'm keeping my speculation loose that it's just going to be some kind of aha or some kind of gotcha moment when that helmet comes off. We'll see if I'm right. That's a loose enough speculation that I won't be disappointed if it ends up not being the case. It might be the other way around. It's a cool looking helmet. It might be that she starts off without the helmet and then when it's time to get on that swoop bike or something, she puts on this awesome helmet and you know that she's like, oh, 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 we got a, we got a serious racer over here. You know, could be. Uh, look at this one. Oh my gosh, we got Luke in R2. And Luke's like, he's not a ghost. Luke's not a ghost. What? Do, are they going back in time? Did they get the Infinity Gauntlet? What's going on here? What's now? I gotta go with the most obvious answer to that as well. This is either a flashback. It certainly looks like Luke is watching the Jedi Temple burn down. However, however, when the Jedi Temple burnt down, Luke had the shorter dark hair and the brown mustache. This is old man Luke from Octo, which was many years after the Jedi Temple was burnt down. So it's not this. It's not appropriate for him to be watching the Jedi Temple burnt down, right? Also, that was more of a deserty, dusty kind of planet, and this looks like more like it's foliage and grass. So I don't think this is Luke watching the Jedi Temple burn down. But he's not a ghost. So what I think is more likely is they just haven't applied the ghost CGI effects yet, and this is just he's gonna be Ghost Luke standing there. It's like, look what you did, Ray. You screwed up. You let this nice forest catch fire. Only you can prevent forest fires. Oh, I have Ghost R2 right next to me also, because R2-D2 is also a ghost, too. I mean, we'll see, you know. Um, so, that's uh, it's going to be interesting. I, it could, and the other thing is, it could just be a photograph for no reason at all. Like, like maybe while they were taking all these awesome photographs, the set caught fire, and Luke goes, Hey, great. Mark Hamill says, Hey, snap this photo real quick. It'll really confuse some fans. Because Mark Hamill does like to mess with fans. The photo might not mean anything, but let me know in the description and the comments section what you think is up with this photo. Does it mean anything? Is it dangerous to read too far into it? It usually is. It usually is. Uh, we've got some John Williams doing the music, uh, and you know, and they have some footage on there. We can see uh, Leia with uh, the uh, that jungle background behind her, which is cool, and it's gonna be great having John Williams finish. The Skywalker saga. Um, some more of yeah, the chase scenes. Some of these are kind of out of order. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the crew. And the Knights of Ren, folks, confirmed. These are absolutely the Knights of Ren. And from the description, it seems like they are working for Kylo Ren. At, at, at least at some point in the film. I don't know if for the whole time. I had speculated a long time ago that he was going to have to fight the Knights of Ren. He was going to have to, like, when he becomes a good guy, he's going to be like, oh, but all my disciples are still bad guys. They're not going to like me being a good guy. I'm going to have to fight them all off. Ray, I could use your help here. Similar to the Praetorian Guard fight. Like, I could beat them one-on-one, -on -one, but I can't fight all of them at the same time. No problem. I will help you, and we will team up like before. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Rah! You know, I don't know what that is. I just, like, that's kind of what goes on in my head, just random screaming all the time. Knights of Ren look cool. Um, I'm digging it. We're actually going to get... And this is satisfying to me because it means we, it means they're probably going to answer some of our questions. That's one of the biggest problems I have with most entertainment 
And again, I'm grateful. It's a good problem to have. I don't want to sound too spoiled here. I don't want to sound like a spoiled brat. But I get so frustrated when you know major entertainment sources set up a really big plot point and then don't pay it off. Like, I mean, look at Game of Thrones. Jon Snow is actually a Targaryen. Oh, he's the heir to the throne. Uh, uh, let's just not even have that mean anything. What the heck? And the same thing with Episode Eight. Like... I love episode 8, but I'm really annoyed that it didn't pay off a lot of the things that it was supposed to pay off. And 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 I'll be okay with that if it just turns out episode 9 pays those things off instead, because at least they get paid off. I'm okay with episode 8 just being that middle chapter, because that's exactly what it is. You know, I just wanted at least some questions answered. And I, you know, and, and we'll see if the Ray thing ends up being true. Uh, we'll see if Ray ends up having, uh, you know, a little bit more of her story illuminated. Because I think we'll probably get a little more on that. Or maybe just closure. Maybe she'll just accept what is true. And that's going to be interesting. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's all we got. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Looks very cool. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you for right now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.